what's going on guys, Elvo here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made Crystal Clash Season 2 Part 2. Now, uh, as I'm recording this, I'm not done with Crystal Clash Season 2 Part 2. As you're watching this, it's already come out. So, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. I am currently working on the next feature in it, which you've probably already seen in that episode, which is gems that the, uh, that the marbles can collect bring back to their base and heal themselves with. That's what I'm going to be doing today, and uh, so yeah, let's get started. First, I'm going to go over a brief overview over some of the code, just so that you understand what I'm doing as I go along in, in creating this. Um, just a brief overview, because I haven't shown you, to the extent I've done coding stuff uh, in Algodoo on this channel, it hasn't been too complex, versus the, the code here is pretty uh, complex with functions and whatnot. So I'm not going to go too in-depth, plus even if I did and you did understand it, it would take way too long. So, uh, yeah, first we can look, quick look at the, just everything in the scene. We've got this giant block here, we've got the two islands, the three islands actually that I've designed, that I designed yesterday. Uh, we've got the actual bracket up here, and you can see the first round is gold versus rainbow, which I'm setting up right now. Um, you can see this is kind of castle theme, these blocks bounce the marbles up here. You already know this because you've already seen the episode. But um, let's start with the actual marbles, I guess. Uh, if we right click on one of the marbles, go to the script menu, you can see all this stuff here. I've got a function right here, which is um, in the same format as any other function. It goes in parentheses, in parentheses, all the arguments, which for most of them is just E, which I'm not sure what it represents. I'm pretty sure it represents just all the variables related to the object. And then equals, equals, and then the greater than symbol, and then curly brackets, and then everything, ever, all the code is in the curly brackets. So that's how on Clyde works, that's how on die works, that's how post step works, that's how all these work. And that's what I've done over here with underscore hit, except I added a comma, and I added other. Which, um, basically this code is ran every time the marble gets hit. Over here you can see on on Clyde, if the other marble um, this material name equals team 2, which basically means they're on the other team. You can see my material name is on team 1, because this is, team 1 is the, the team on the left, team 2 is the team on the right. So, if I'm hit by a marble on the opposing team, I get hit, I run this function, and basically, it raises my health by the, um, it raises my health, which is the percentage above here, by the, uh, by, by the other marbles. Uh, the, the, oh yeah, wait, okay, I'm getting this mixed up. This is for when I hit another marble. I am, I am hitting the other marble and dealing damage to it. It's the other health on the other marble is being set by, is being increased by my current strength. And my strength is based on how fast I'm moving. So the faster I move, the harder I hit, the harder I hit, the higher percentage the other marble goes. And the higher percentage the other marble goes, their velocity is increased by basically the more health they get the greater they get sped up sometimes this is this can appear in kind of weird bounces where a marble is coming from down below and hits a marble that's moving pretty fast this way and because this marble that's moving pretty fast this way is at such a high percentage it flings across the entire screen which i wish i could fix that so instead of just flinging in the same direction or in a similar direction because this marble wasn't going very fast which i could make it so it looked better in that way but whatever. It does its job, it uh, increases the amount of velocity the other marble goes on after a collision if it has higher health, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, you can see every frame, I've got some other stuff being set. I'm setting strength under uh, equal to underscore speed. Basically what this is doing, underscore speed is just the uh, absolute value of my current velocity, uh, which is just my total, base. It, it's my speed. My speed at this current time. And then the strength value is one frame behind my current speed, which is actually what you want because right when you on collide happens, it's actually um, the frame the frame of that the marble that you just collide with is already moving away from you. Sorry, you're already moving away from the marble you just collided with, which means taking the total the total uh, velocity of the total speed of yourself right when you collide is not going to work because you've already collided. Um, so you're going to have to take the speed right before the collision, which is what this is doing. I'm sorry if that is a little too complicated, I might be speaking too fast, but I'm trying to cover a lot here. Maybe I shouldn't go so much in detail, I don't know. Um, and then, it's, then here we're setting, as I showed in the, uh, as I showed in my How to Script and Now Go To series, this is just a public variable that, uh, is setting, 
it, we are setting it to this marble's self, so that any other object, namely the little, the little uh, percentage thing above here, can access all these values. Which, of course, the percentage thing is accessing the health value, which is right here. Um, and then lastly, it's setting its its name, which is a name that pops up whenever, whenever it dies. Which, by the way, yes, those notifications are in Algodoo. They're not added in editing. Um, we're, we set that name equal to a public value, which is basically the color name of Team 1. And then we add under uh, parentheses 1 to it, because this is the first marble. And then, obviously, for the second marble, we can see in here it's number 2, and so on and so forth. Um... So yeah, that's the basic code of the marble. We've got some other stuff in here, for instance, the health of the crystal is here, um, which is pretty simple, that just sets the text equal to health plus whatever the health currently is. We've got the actual crystal, which, which um, if it's hit by the opposing team, it will lower its health by one, and then if it's below zero, it says time to live equal to zero, which basically just makes it instantly die. Um, and then the percentages, you can see here, um, actually got some somewhat complicated here, code here. Let's see, we've got, we've got this code, which basically, it grabs the other, the other marble, the, or the marble that it's grabbing onto, it sets its own position to the marble's position, raised a tiny bit, and then if, um, the other marble is about to die, oh yes, if the marble is about to die, um, it moves its position way up here. So it still exists, but it's way off screen. You can't see it anymore. And then when the marble, when the marble, a new marble spawns, and it's fully live and well, then this gets run. And let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. I'm getting a little confused. So we can see here, it's setting itself to the, the marble's position raised a little bit, right? But what happens if the marble dies? Underscore marble is no longer being set, so it's still equal to whatever the last frame was the marble was still alive. So if I just kept this code, if I just kept this code for the position, then once a marble hit the ground here, the the text, the percentage text, would just stay right there until the marble respawned, which we don't want. So whenever the marble just died, we set the position equal to a thousand, and that stays, and this this will stay this that way until the marble respawns. And then it's time to live is obviously no, no longer less than one at that point, so it will just reset it back to the normal position. And then here is just some code that makes sure that the percentage looks right and is uh, centered over the marble. Like I'm adding extra spaces beforehand if there are uh, less, uh, if the health is lower. Basically just making sure it's centered because there is unfortunately no way in the text editor to center text which is dumb. Should be a thing, but it's not. Um, and then over here, so that's that's the basic stuff over here. Then we've got some other more complicated stuff oops, that I'm not going to go into, but basically you can see there's a ton of code on here. Basically, we've got some code for manipulating the camera. You don't need to know too much about that. Basically know that depending if I'm pressing one, two, three, or four, it will set the camera in different ways. We've got some stuff that happens on Collide. Basically, all of this stuff will it will run a function that will set a bunch of variables up for the respawn function. And then here we've got the die and die forever functions, which are public fun functions that have, you can see a lot of parameters, that basically spawn that little notification box and then will respawn the marble after a certain amount of time. That's basically all you need to know there. Um, and actually, I just realized every time uh, we set, we... I, every time a new match comes up, I have to change all the colors of all the teams, obviously. But also, I need to change the colors in here. So you can see, we've got underscore color and underscore text color, which is... Um, the underscore color box is for the marble and the notification box, and underscore T color is just the text on the notification box. So you can see here, underscore... I need to set those for... So this is team one. Team one is gold, so I'm gonna set those really quick. And then, oh yes, I forgot about this. Let me make sure this is correct. Uh, yeah, so here, there's a number right here. I believe what this number does, I will check right here. What that number number does, it will spawn the respawn the marble with a particular set of parameters. 
um, with a particular set of parameters. For instance, if this is zero, then it will have no special parameters. If it's set to one, I believe it is yin yang, which will spawn as yin yang. If it's two, I believe it will spawn as rainbow. And if it's three, I believe it will spawn. Wait, hold on. Is there hypnosis in this? I don't know. I'm just going to see. I'm just going to respawn marble. Oh, is there a separate thing for is rainbow? Let's see. Is rainbow. Where is that? All right. Sorry about that. So, um, turns out there's some code that I uh, hadn't updated in a while that I need to update. So, um, after sorry, so after updating that code. I have now realized that, yes, this number is what I thought it was, but it wasn't properly impl implemented, but it's implemented now. So if I set it to 1, oops, if I set it to 1, not 10, if I set it to 1, then that means the marble will spawn with a rain rainbow trail and a rainbow color, which is what we want. As far as what the actual, what it actually spawns as, I'm gonna set it to, oops, that is... I'm just gonna set it by default when it right right when it spawns to red, which I think is fine. And then the text for it I've been setting to white because it's a lot harder to make text turn rainbow. So hold on. Okay. Why is it the script menu? There we go. It's really obnoxious to look at. I'm sorry if you're getting seizure. Eh. I copied the text code. I just realized that it's just white. Why did I have to copy that? Whatever. Um. Yeah. So I got the text code here. Boom. Bam. Bop. So now it will spawn as red, will cycle through all the colors like rainbow should, and will the text will be white like it should be. Um, I think that's all I have to do. I think I've pretty much set it up. So now I can actually start adding some new stuff. So yeah, that's basically an overview of everything. Sorry if I uh, made it too complicated or if I didn't explain things well enough. I'm kind of new at this whole explaining codes stuff. Um, a lot of the code, I don't really, I have to reanalyze myself because I make it too complicated, but anyway. So let's get started making the crystal thing. So I don't know how big to make it. That's probably pretty good. I'm gonna make it orange and I'm gonna make it no draw borders and I'm gonna make it glow slightly. Maybe not that big of a 0.25 meters. That's pretty good. Just realizing it doesn't look very good with this this thing not being the same shape here. Let me change that. That looks better. It's still not quite the same shape there, but it's fine. And then make it so it's right in between. So two there, two there. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna copy that, paste that there, and also paste this little bottom spike. I really didn't need to add that bottom spike. I just thought it looked cool. And I think you would agree. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see, so now that's set up, so I need to make some values inside of it. I'm going to make an, under, an underscore value, which is just going to be currently, or maybe underscore amount, that's more descriptive. Um, I'm going to set to zero for now, actually I'm going to colon equals because for some reason sometimes just doing equals doesn't work. I'm actually just going to do all the code while selecting both of them. First I just need to add it to here, so colon equals zero. And then from then on, I'm going to do all the code by selecting both objects. So now, um, I've got that set up, underscore mount, on post step, where's post step? There's post step. I'm going to say, um, uh, time to live, which I use time to live very often, it's just a timer, um, for various things, so that's what I'm going to use it here for, for here. If time to live is less than 10, and I put it like that, so I let me explain this through just in case you haven't seen those coding, algo, how to code in algo to videos, or if you need a refresher. So I put the condition here, time to live less than 10, and then I put a question mark to basically signify it's an if statement. Then one set of curly break it, braces, um, colon, and then another set of curly braces. The first one, we put all the code in here for when this is true, and we put all the code in here for when it is false. Alright, so let's get started here. Time to live is less than 10. If that is the case, basically that means our time has gone up, which means we want to add another value to our amount. So we're going to say underscore amount plus equals. Does plus equals work in... It's not. Oh man. In a lot of other co coding languages, plus equals would just add another 
uh, value to it. So I'm going to say, I guess, underscore mount equals underscore mount plus one, which will just add one to the current amount. Um, and then I'm going to set time to live for now equal to 25. So every 15 seconds, it will add one to amount. And then we need to, of course, reset our timer. So we're going to say time to live equals 25. Don't need to put the colon or the semicolon there. Just remember, if it's not the last line, we need to put a semicolon at the end. So here, I put a semicolon. Here, I don't need to. And then I also want to code. I want I want this uh, crystal to become bigger every every time it increases. I don't know by how much. We'll mess around with that in a second. So here, separate and apart from this, I'm going to say size. Or sorry, not size. Radius equals one two five zero point one two five plus. 0 0.05 maybe maybe 0 0.025 times underscore amount let's try that so if i just click play it's normal size if i increase it to three how much does it increase by that's a pretty big increase maybe maybe it needs to be smaller by default Hold on. zero because zero Zero, it should be pretty small, right? So maybe by default, what does it look like when the radius is... Yeah, that's better. Okay, so that's what happens if it's zero. How I just add 0 0.01 every time? And then five looks like that. Two looks like that. One looks like that. It's increasing by a very small amount every time. I think that's probably good. I'm just going to keep it like that for now. Um, it will only grow to the actual size of a marble when it's, like, pretty large. So I think that's probably fine. Although, it might be... I'm going to just do 0 0.05 just to be safe. So now when it's 15, yeah, that's better. If it's 5, it still needs to be noticeably bigger. And then 2... See if one is any noticeable. Yeah. All right, that's good. Boom! Increased by a tiny amount. All right, cool. So that works. Now let's make it so that if I collide with something, it um, I increase the marbles amount. Which actually, I should probably add a variable to the marbles really quick. So underscore amount. Or sorry, it needs to be more specific because I'm actually going to be adding kind of spoilers, but I'm going to be adding more, more gems than just these ones in later parts, so look forward to that. So these are going to be called gems, so I'm going to say amount, gem amount, that makes sense. Colon equals zero. Alright, so that has been set, and now in here, I'm going to say on collide e dot other dot underscore gem amount, which is the other, the other gem amount is equal to um, e dot other dot gem dot underscore gem amount plus underscore underscore amount and then I'm going to set underscore amount equal to negative one. Now I'll explain myself in a second by having equal to negative one. Hmm, actually, wait. Yeah. If, okay. So if I want it to be zero, if I'm gonna have it be zero then I want it to just not be there, right? So only be there if it's equal to one. So I'll just have it equal to zero. That makes sense. So it equals zero. And then here in this, in post step, I have this radius thing, which sets the radius. I'm going to say, oops, I'm going to say, so this sets the ra radius. I'm actually going to say minus one. So now, and I'm going to put parentheses here. So basically what this will do is it will have it be set to just 0 0.1 when it's equal to 1. And then every number after that, it will go up. So now if it's equal to like 15, that's a pretty decent size. 5. And then 1 will be the same size there. Yeah. And then 0. So here I'm going to say underscore amount is equal to zero 
if that is true, this will run. If not, then we will set them to set the size. We don't need to set the size while it's invisible. And here I'll just set collide set, which is a set of colliders that it can uh, collide with, which is actually just represented by a number. And if it's equal to zero, then it can't collide with anything, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to set to zero, and I'm going to set color equal to, I mean, I guess it's always going to be orange, so I can set I can set the orange RGB values equal to what orange is, so just like that. But then the main one I want to change is the last value, which is the, uh, the alpha value. I'm going to set that to zero. Boom. So now if there is nothing there, I will make it invisible. And if there is something there, we'll set the size appropriately. So now it should go invisible. Oh, I said I'm just going to set it to one. Boom is now invisible, we can't see it. But then, if I just set this to... Oh. Boop. Oh. Oh, oh, I see. Alright, so... If it's increased, we have it set to that if it equals zero, we make it invisible. But if it uh, goes back from being zero equal to one, I need to make it so it's no longer invisible. So I'm going to do that really quick. Um, I'm going to add semicolon at the end of this and then before that add all this code and then just make it so that collide set equals one which is what it should be by default and alpha equals one as well so now uh it's all set to zero i'm gonna just shortcut this and set it to 15 just so that we only get to wait five seconds so it's invisible right now and then after one more second boom it is now visible and then it will increase further each time. So, we've got the gems set up. If a marble collects it, which we can test this right now. There we go. We got some gems. Oh, okay. I just realized the rainbow marbles aren't set correctly, but it, co it collected a thingy, and it should be where is underscore amount. Aha. So here, this is, I'm going to have to fix this later, but since this marble respawned, I believe this is true. Since this marble respawned, it did not have the underscore gem amount value, which I'm going to change in a minute, but when it, but if it did, I'm pretty sure it would be increased. And actually, I can check if any of these marbles have respawned. Has this marble respawned? It has a gem amount value, so this marble has not died yet. So I'm going to just push it over, boom. Gem amount. Yay! Gem amount equals one. Perfect. So, that's working. So now, the last thing I want to do in this episode... Well, the last couple things I want to do is I want to make it so that this a, a number appears here for this. And then I want to make it so that um, when the marbles collect it and bring it back to their base, they heal themselves. So, that shouldn't take too long. I'm going to, unfortunately, have to make... Well, not unfortunately, but I just... I find it annoying whenever I have to do this. I'm going to have to make a variable for this this marble um i'll probably just set yeah i'll put oh scene dot my dot underscore uh, gem gem amount one i guess is probably the shortest way to say that and then gem amount two which are basically the amount of the uh, this this basically it's this value but it's a public version for each of the two spawns this is one this is two yeah, so gem amount 1 equal, sorry, not 1, 2 equals to underscore amount. So underscore amount is be, still being used, but we are just uh, setting scene.my.underscore gem amount 1 or 2 equal to underscore amount every frame so that they're basically the same. Boom, boom. I didn't have to add that, add that semicolon, but it got rid of it for me, so it's fine. So now I actually can select, or I should be able to select both, and at least this post step oh wait a minute why did I god dang it I put it in on collide did not mean to do that so now uh, at least on collide will be sync will I'll be able to change between both objects which if you don't understand what I'm saying when I say that uh, I'll go to if I'm selecting multiple objects I want to change all the, like collective code in all of these if I go to script menu, if they're at all different, you can see that post step is displayed as a question mark because there's multiple values here, right? 
um, versus on collide, since it's the same for both, I can edit this, uh, the on collide here, and it'll edit it for both, which is really nice, if, especially if you have a bunch of these. In this case, I only have two, so it's not that bad, but you can see now if I want to change a particular thing in here, which is the same between the two objects, because there's just this one difference, I can't change it, which is annoying. So, um, yeah, probably could make that into a function, but meh, I'm not going to take the effort to do that, because that is a solution, it's using functions for that kind of thing. But anyway, now I'm going to create a box, which is just going to display the current amount of um, gems in this current location, so make it invisible, no longer drop orders, I'm going to just put a temporary text there, turn up the font resolution all the way, go to my font, which if you didn't know, I don't know why this font is so big, why the heck is it so big? Um, if I go down here, if you didn't know, it is actually Cable. Cable spelled K-A-B-E-L. I don't know why it's not being set right now. Alright, so we got that set up. I want to make it small enough. Let's see. Like that. Is that pretty good? I want it to be a dark orange. So that matches. That's pretty good. I mean, I don't have to make it brown. I guess we can make it a different color, but I, th I think... I think that's that's fine. See, this position, this position is gonna have to change a, quite, like a little bit in order to stay centered, which is again really annoying that I have to that text cannot be centered like that. If you know if there's a way to do that, please tell me because I don't know how to do that. In here, I'm going to have it so that text equals scene dot my dot underscore gem amount one. That's pretty simple. So now this will equal the current jump amount. However, it will not equal the current jump amount if uh, gem amount is equal to zero. Actually, I'm gonna say if not equal to zero. Not is just an exclamation point. So not equal to zero. Then we'll do this on the case that it, in the case that it is equal to zero, I'm going to set text equal to nothing, uh, which will basically be the equivalent of turning this invisible. And now, finally, the position of this, this is going to be kind of tricky, it's going to be this value, right? I want it to be this by default, but then it's going to be equal to, how, how much are we increasing the size of this by? We're increasing the size of this by 0 0.005 every time. So I'm going to say pause equals this plus 0.005 times the gem amount the gem amount minus 1 and then the same thing over here so that it should probably stay synced question mark I don't really know um, let's see I guess so if it's equal to 0 it turns it visible that's good if it's equal to 1 it should just stay the same yeah, and then if it's equal to 3, it's not changing for some reason. Maybe I have to put put quotations and then plus. I don't know why you would have to do that. Okay, you do have to do that. I don't know why that's the case. That's kind of weird. But apparently you do have to do that. Go back to when it was reset. All the marbles haven't moved. Don't want to don't want to accidentally save it at a point where save it at a point that. Uh, where the marbles are in the proper place. So now that's working. That's working except it's moving this the 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 the, the thing where it's moving is moving in the wrong direction. So in the X it needs to be moving to the left. So I need a uh, minus take this and minus 0 0.005 for every extra amount there is. And 0 0.005 I think is too much. I think maybe 0 0.025 because since it's increasing in both directions, I think that is probably more accurate. So that seems to be okay. What if I increase it to something crazy like 10? Okay, well that doesn't seem to be increasing it enough. Oh, because it's equal to a double, it's a double digit number. If I set it to nine, well that's still not really that great. Now is it? Oh wait, what am I do, wait, what am I doing? I shouldn't be increasing the X amount 
I shouldn't be increasing the position of the X. The X should stay the same, unless it's equal to 10. And actually, neither should this. It should only be increasing for every, for every 10 values that I have, right? Because since it's increasing in all directions from the center, by keeping it centered, it should be okay. Oh, you know what? You know I was doing that? I was doing that because I thought... Can I control Z that? I can't. Um, I guess I've got this, the version, the same version of this code right here. I think I was going to do that. Yeah, I really didn't finish up this code enough. It's doing that, but it also needs to increase the text size. Text font size is equal to 0.25 plus 0.1 times see if that yeah that should save it like that and then just copy and paste that so it should increase by 0 0.01 okay what happened there what's this text size being set to there oh text font size that's not what i meant to do i meant to do text scale text font size kind of confusing uh, is actually the quality. Oh my god, that is way bigger than it should be. Why is it being increased by that much? It's being set to no oh. Okay, I did not mean 0 0.1. I meant 0 0.01. And that even that's too big. Okay, 0 0.05. There we go. That's pretty good. So now, up until it hits 10, it's pretty good. Um, if it does hit 10, how bad is it? It's pretty bad. So, every time it hits 10, if, so let's, let's say, scene dot, my dot, underscore, gem, it's not gonna go above, like, above, like, it's not gonna go above 99, there's no point in doing that. So, gem amount, if it's greater than 9, meaning it's 10 or higher. Uh, then I'm going to do some do some code in here, and if that isn't the case, I'm going to do this position code. So if it is greater than nine, instead of 0 0.025, it's still going to be 0 0.025, but I'm going to increase this to like 36, maybe 35. So now, okay, that's still not enough. Oh wait, that's in the X, so that should be 33, actually. Okay, that's still not doing anything. 0, 0.75. That's pretty good. Um, maybe 0, 0.7? Yeah, that's pretty good. And then, if I increase it even more, if I say 15, I don't think it's ever going to be as high as 15, but that does look pretty good. So if it if it does end up being 15, 15 does end up working not nice. And then if it is less than 10, oops, then that works pretty well as well. All right, I think finally I've gotten that working. And now I'm just going to delete this. This this always happens. I end up creating two of one thing and then doing all the work on one whenever. I have to, and then I end up just copying and pasting the other one in. So now, um, let me see, gym mount 2, there's a, quite a few places where this is referenced. And now, it should be good, so now the marble should be able to, uh, go down here, every 15 seconds, a new gem should spawn. There we go. I've got one. Will anyone collect it? Oh, there we go. We got a rainbow marble. Does he have a gem amount? He does. And he just got one gem amount. And now, um, we might get a gold there. Oh, the gold almost collected it. So, I've gotten, I've gotten basically this working all the way. Oh, whoa, that was crazy. Oh, I need to make it so that right after, right, right when you collect it, it needs to reset the timer. So, once it's set to zero, it sets the time to live back to 25 seconds. Uh, and then, now, I think it's all working. Um, I wanted to make it so that, so that when the marbles go back to their base, bleh, 
when the marbles go back to their base, it increases the, you know, it does what it's supposed to do, and based on how much gem amount it has, they increase, and then also I'm gonna have to make a little display above here, which is gonna take a very long time, probably at least as long as this took, but this is getting too long, and I'm sure you learned a lot of stuff just from my overview and this alone. So, um, yeah, if you want more videos like this, please leave those in the comments below. Um, if, please let me know also if I was rushing through it a little bit too fast. Maybe, maybe I should continue my coding and I'll go to series and slowly work on these topics instead of just jumping into behind the scenes like this. But a lot of people have been asking, oh, how do you do Marpocalypse? Oh, how do you do the Epic Marble Race? And I figured the Crystal Clash is such a brand new series that not, none of you guys really had time to suggest making Cody series for it, but I felt like it's a perfect, it's a perfect thing, because Crystal Clash, the first season, was the, the original, like, I'll go do coding thing that I ever did. Like, most of my other stuff before that didn't involve any I'll go do scripting. That did. Very small, a very small amount, but it did involve some I'll go do scripting. And this is, like a lot of my other new series, involves a lot of I'll go do scripting, as you saw, and I figured I would do a video on it, so, um, yeah, if you want to see more videos on this series or more coding algorithm videos in general, leave those in the uh, leave that in the comments below, or just like the video to let me know you liked it. Dislike it if I don't know you generally don't like these coding videos. Um, if you like the coding videos but didn't like the format, please don't dislike. Leave a comment or something. Or if you really did hate the format, I guess you can dislike it. But please leave some constructive criticism in the comments below. I always appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much about it. So I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, Will.